Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. They pull up to the Denny's and they embrace and kiss in the car. What do you want to do? They, I wanna, detectives I wanna are on them him. right now. I want to confront them. Is this worth it? Huh? Is he a better person than me? Your husband? You know he You abandoned your son? He's wrong because he went to my house. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Hang me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. You don't get him. Fuck you. Stop. Go. Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another compelling episode of Cheaters. Please meet Jube Marsh, the man who fears his young wife has second thoughts regarding their marriage. Concerned with recent changes in their relationship, Jube looks to cheaters for help. Jube Marsh, age 26. While Jube cares for their infant son, he fears that his wife may be raising another love interest. Six years ago, January, this coming January, just happened to meet her through a friend. It went from like to love. It went from, you know, holding hands to kissing, you know, the whole... I've really never had anything like this before. I mean, I've had, you know, girlfriends, but never love, real love. In a way, I was kind of pushed by my friends, like, you know, if you're going to be with her, marry her, you know, propose. I wanted to. She was happy as could be, showed love and affection. And of course, and she said yes. But that was way on before, you know, we had the child. But she started to go to nursing school after she had healed pretty much, almost 100%. Started hanging around those girls. They didn't have any children, weren't married. They kept her out all night, drinking, partying. As I look at it this way, she, we had a child, we're married. You know, those days are over. You can still have friends and be married. But going out all the time, and not being there for your family and not putting your family first is wrong. There's a part of me that is just gaping open inside, yearning to know what is going on, to know the truth, needing help desperately to figure it out. And that's why I called y'all. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity of suspect withheld. Age undisclosed. A wait person who may be serving up more than just food and drinks to her customers. Investigation day one. Cheaters' crews go straight to work, and within a few hours, they have their first lead. Cheaters' detectives follow the suspect from work, where she gives a co-worker a lift home. Initially, it all seems innocent in nature, but investigators are clued in to potential trouble when the suspect and her male companion enter an apartment and spend nearly three mysterious hours inside. Over three hours later, at 9.38 p.m., the two emerge from the dwelling and head out for a night on the town. The two head over to a local pub and spend several hours inside, while Jube waits alone at home. Finally, near closing time, the two hop into the suspect's vehicle and return to what is apparently the male's home, evidently for an overnight stay. 
Investigation day two. The next morning, the couple departs together, and interestingly enough, the suspect entrusts the male companion with her car. The two then head off to work, where cheaters detectives observe the suspect's vehicle outside in the parking lot. Meanwhile, Jube is clueless that his wife is developing a relationship with another man, instead of sleeping over with one of her girlfriends. Investigation day five. On this evening, the suspect and her male companion once again return to their local watering hole, while Jube and his son remain alone at home. Investigation day six. The following morning, the suspect picks up their son and takes him to daycare. She carelessly loads her son into the car with total disregard for his safety. While driving, she professes her innocence to her husband and swears no involvement has occurred with her co-worker. I'm gonna ask one more time, one more time. And I'm hoping I can get your answer. There's nothing going on between you, correct? Oh. I just, I'm trying to get the truth one Correct. last time. And he's never been in there. He's never been in the apartment. But cheaters detectives know otherwise, as cameras catch the suspect and her companion coming out of the Marsh's apartment late that afternoon. Apparently, the two spend a long lunch break together while Jube is hard at work. Investigation day nine. Cheaters investigators are caught off guard by the two who romantically kiss in the restaurant parking lot. The two are obviously unaware that cheaters cameras catch their every move. Unable to restrain themselves, they kiss and kiss again, adding insult to Jube's injury. Cheaters closes the case and returns to Jube with a heartbreaking report. After the break, the confrontation. With the shameful indiscretions of Jube's wife well documented, Cheaters briefs him on the severity of the situation. Faced with his wife's inexplicable behavior, Jube manages to gain control of his volatile emotions. We have gathered enough information to prove that your wife has been lying to you and deceiving you. Early on in the investigation, they seem to be very cautious. This is the guy. Yeah, that's right. He works with her. Yes, that's right. We followed them over to yeah, this uh, this bar where they stayed in there for three or four hours, partying it up. Here they are leaving that evening, and then went over to the place where he they then spent the night. This was the next morning. Two people that are friends normally don't spend every night no. with each other. And then what was also strange, here he's driving her car. Yeah, and she says he never drives her car. Oh, really? And they're just friends. And they're, she just gives him a ride to work or home. Well, and that's it, huh? Okay. Yeah. It's very frustrating. And this was the shocking footage that we gathered this morning. Here they are. It's a little more difficult to see on the small screen. But as you can see, they pull up to the Denny's and they embrace and kiss in the car. What a liar. What do you want to do? They, I wanna, our detectives I wanna are on them him. right now. I want to confront them. Why don't we go over Let's go. and catch up with them? Let's go. I think it's important right now. Let's go. Let's go. Little block your ass in. Right here. Go. There she is. And there he is. Come right out my side. Take in, jump out, go, go. Come on, right now, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Where are you going, huh? You trying to hide the truth? Are you gonna come talk to your husband? I'm her husband. She's cheating on me. Is that your son? No. Then who then who are you to him? I have no sons. I have no. Well, he, my name is Jube Marsh. That is Marsh. Jube. Okay. Uh, 
That is my wife. That is my wife. My name is Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. And, uh, Cheaters! Oh, we're here to talk to you about uh, the lies and betrayals that she's been... I have some kind uh, of uh, paperwork or something that allow you to uh, stop and talk to her or get inside. It's my wife. That's all I need. Let me just ask you a question. Ask me what you want. If your wife was lying to you mm -hmm. and deceiving you, and the only way you could find out is do an investigation and ask for some help. You know how to do it? On my own. <laughs> on my own. You gonna tell the truth now, huh? You gonna tell me to my face that's the truth? What? What's the about, truth? About you and my wife? What's about you gonna tell the truth? truth? Come on, no. what? You gonna tell the what truth? Up, about you and my wife being together? What do you think? Why, why, why don't you start about telling about some truth? That. How she's always with you and not with our son and me. Why have you been lying? I think I'm Hey, God, you're five years. Oh. Hey, tell the truth. Tell the truth. You just gonna run away, huh? Why didn't you just ask him for a divorce? Uh, he's getting the papers tomorrow. You break up my family. You break up my family. Come here. Yeah, come on. Hey, come here. Come here. Give me your hand. Let's go. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. You break up my family. You. My wife. Oh, I didn't. What's your name? It's none of your business what my name is. Hey, don't tell me that thing. You came to my door. Are you deaf? You came to my Are door. Are you deaf? Do you not understand English? Hey, you know what? Come here. Come here. Come here. Why don't you go back home? No, you come here. Look, you have to have all these big guys put you in a car. I don't need them for Come out here and tell me right now. You came to my Get your finger out of my face. Hey, up, you came to my house. You what came am I to gonna my do? Boss. You're lucky they're here. You're oh, to be on the road. An audio tape of you saying that you weren't seeing anybody else and that, that he was the only one. All it takes is a little honesty. Coming up, the conclusion. When you said... I love you. You made your vows that day. Did that not mean anything to you? All it takes is a little honesty. Just a little honesty. Did you not want to be honest with him? Why were you deceiving him? When you, you said, when you said for better or for worse. Get out of my way. When, when you said when I, I said did for better, better or for worse, worse, I was nine months pregnant. Why have you been deceiving him? Why weren't you speaking the truth? Hey guys, get them apart. Is this worth it? Huh? Is he a better person than me? Your husband? You know he abandoned your son. He's wrong because he went to my house. She's wrong. You abandoned your son for him. And you're wrong. Do you realize what you've been doing? Do you understand? She's married. You don't mind that she was lying. You're okay with that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Hey, load up and let's go. Oh, that's right. You're right. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Can you shoot? Well, that's a sad deal. She doesn't say a word. Stone cold. Doesn't say anything. When we talked about things that she had no argument over, she would be quiet, wouldn't say anything. So of course, she's never going to admit she's wrong. There was. Uh, she feels no remorse. What she told me was there was five years of abuse. <laughs> yeah, from her. He, and thinks it's funny. He's getting a real kick out of it. I took your woman. There's nothing you can do about it. I broke your marriage up. Well, he doesn't care. I'm proud of him though, for standing up for you and your child. And that uh, reaffirms, you know, what we're doing is a positive thing. And I just want you to use this in a, in a positive way and do something with this new power and this evidence and you can go forward and let's start rebuilding Jube's life. Yeah. Okay? Okay. You'll promise me that? Mm -hmm. It's a much better thing. Okay? Thank you.
All right, man. Call me anytime. I'll see you back over here in a minute. After the confrontation, Jube has a chance to reflect on the state of his marriage. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals Jube's plans for the future. But next, Cheaters welcomes back John Bausch, a man who's still in disbelief over the way he was treated by his former lover. John comes forward to warn of the pitfalls of an erratic relationship. John Bausch, age 31. John imparts some cautionary advice to anyone becoming involved in a serious relationship. I mean, it was just bad because I kind of knew it was going on, and I was really hoping it wasn't. So that was tough for me. I mean, I just, you know, I should have known better. And that was the big, my biggest problem is it wasn't so much her, I mean, it was her cheating on me a lot, but definitely just feeling like I was made, you know, made a fool of. And especially being made a fool of somebody you really care about, it's even worse. John. Yo, what's up? John. Just friends, right? Right? Just friends. Yes. Hey, John. 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 He doesn't come around anymore. Felt good to hit him because he deserved to get hit. Like, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, put him in the hospital, but sometimes you do certain stuff and you need to get smacked. We'll, we'll just let you know that that's not all right to do. Just listen. Why don't you get your hand off? Yo. Oh, guys. Why don't you get your hand off? Guys. Hey, hey. What? You want whoa, some? whoa, whoa. Yeah, I do whoa. want some. Why don't you bring some? Oh, my God. What, John? Well, I just think. Amy got kind of caught up. She got, you know, I think that happens a lot in this town where there's just so many people and so much stuff going on here that it gets, you always kind of start going, maybe there's something better around the corner. Maybe there's something better over there. Maybe there's something better. And, you know, she started hanging out with some other people and started meeting other people and new things and got a little taste for the new life. And she wanted a little taste of it. And then as she came back, and, you know, now she regrets it. I mean, I knew, I knew exactly how it was going to go down. Yeah. I don't know what, this is like not how this is supposed Whatever, to work, Whatever, just John. go, go with him, go with him, stay with him. Spend four years with him, you can have him. <laughs> I know for a fact she's going to be calling me like in an hour. Well, I don't know, I mean after that day, like I didn't go home for a few days. I mean well, that was the hard part is we still lived together. You know, I mean, luckily I had the lease, but uh, I mean, she she's got some some good friends and her folks, and I just kind of you know I went home, we talked. It was incredibly irritating. Um, I just told her she had to pack up her stuff and leave, and then we thought we could talk again. I left for a few more days. I came back. She got most of her stuff out, and over like you know the next couple of months we talked a little less, a little more. Lately we've been talking more than. But, you know, I mean, I, it's one of those things where I still really care about her. There's a part of me that, well, you know, that really loves her. And there's a part of me that really wants to protect her and make her feel better and make everything all right. But there's another part of me that's just sometimes you got to look out for yourself. After the confrontation, Jube took time to evaluate his life and reflect on the painful situation between him and his estranged wife. Although Jube cares deeply about her, the incident has left him shaken and despondent about their hopeless future together. The suspect apparently intends to continue seeing her male companion, and according to Jube, has shown little remorse for her misdeeds. As such, the two have decided to begin divorce proceedings, with a major point of contention being the custody of their young son. As for the interloper, there has been no indication of any regrets about his involvement with Jube's wife. Perhaps he intends to continue seeing the suspect in hopes of having a fruitful relationship together.